R.I.P. Kobe, man. Definitely one of the greatest of all time. It is widely accepted that Larry Bird is one of the greatest NBA players of all time, and even sneaks his way into the good <laughs> debate among Robin. many basketball circles. The thing is, I personally rank Larry Bird higher than most people do, as he's currently sitting in the sixth spot on my all-time list, and I even have him ranked slightly ahead of Magic Johnson, which is certainly a more uncommon opinion. I think there's some major misconceptions to Bird's game that result in him not getting quite as much credit as I believe he deserves, and by the end of this video, I think that I can convince some of you that Larry Legend is in fact underrated. Why you hate it, Before we get into some misconceptions, let's start with what most people already know about Bird, and I'll elaborate upon it. Over his 13-year career, Larry averaged 24.3 points on a stellar 56.4 true shooting percentage. Despite their talent-heavy history, Bird is the Celtics' all-time leading playoff scorer. So whether it was in the regular season or the postseason, he was always an efficient and lethal threat. He was obviously a legendary scorer and an incredibly efficient shooter. Larry is objectively one of the greatest three-point shooters of all time, as he's tied with Craig Hodges for the most three-point contests won in a career, with a total of three. Okay. The thing is, Hodges participated in a total of eight three-point competitions, <laughs> while Bird only participated in a total of four. So he literally did the same amount of damage as the other all-time leader in half the amount Craig of time. Hodges, On top of all no, of no, this, right. you really could make the argument that Bird is the most all-around efficient score of NBA history. If that seems like a stretch, then consider this. During some of his prime years, Larry went on a five-year stretch where he had 50-40-90 percentages. Only nine players in NBA history have achieved at least one season of 50-40-90 percentages. Yet Larry did it over a five-year stretch while putting up just about 28, 10, and 7 each night. The only player who has come close to that all-around efficiency over such a long period of time is actually Steve Nash. Okay. But the Shout thing is, Nash. Nash was never primarily a scorer and averaged roughly half the amount of points that Larry did during his yeah. stretch. To efficiently he score that many points assist. on that kind of volume of all-around shot attempts is something that Side no one else up. has ever done as well as Larry Bird did. Again, maybe some of you didn't know the extent of how lethal Larry was as an all-around efficient scorer, but I do feel like that's probably the most commonly understood aspect of his game. Now for the misconceptions and the details that definitely make Larry an underrated player. There are a lot of people, especially younger basketball fans, who believe that Larry was a subpar defender. This is incredibly inaccurate, as Bird wasn't just a good defensive Goal. player, but a great one. <laughs> As a 6'9 small forward, he definitely had the size and length to frustrate the offensive opponent. Sure, there is the narrative that Larry was a slow and unathletic player, and thus it affected his defensive play. This is true to a certain extent, but it's also grossly exaggerated. What Larry did have are the most important traits of a great defensive player, which are hustle, heart, intelligence, yep. effort, yep. and availability. Yeah. Larry was never lacking in any of these Heavy areas. On the he always though. put in the work, and he was incredible, not only at reading the defenses, but also at anticipating them. Okay. Larry made Heavy three on NBA all-defense teams throughout the course of Philly. his career, and even finished as high as third overall in the Defensive Player of the Year running in 1983. He wasn't just a solid on-ball and help defender, but he was also a terrific pickpocket as Larry averaged a fantastic 1.7 steals per game over the course of his 13-year career. His best evening in this area came on February 18, 1985 against the Utah Jazz, when Larry dropped 30 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, and 9, nine steals, steals in only 3 quarters of play. In three quarters. Due to them absolutely destroying the Jazz, Bird didn't play a second of the fourth quarter. To this day, the NBA record for the most steals in a single game is 11. <laughs> so not only could he have easily been only the second player to ever achieve the quadruple double, but if Bird had played the fourth, he might have been the record holder for the most steals in a game. You have to be a great defensive Definitely. player in order to be in a position to seize that record. 
On top of all of that, Bird led the entire <laughs> NBA in defensive win shares a total of four times. The Jazz is That's playing the fourth like most Rogers. in NBA history. <laughs> the only players ahead of him on that list are Tim Duncan, George Mikan, and Bill Russell. That is a remarkably short list of great defensive players. Yeah. I'm not trying to say that Bird was on the level of someone like Dennis Rodman or Scottie Pippen, but to call Larry anything other than a great defensive player is either completely ignorant or is just plain disrespect towards his game. The other key for area where people about. underappreciate Bird was his rebounding ability, as Larry was simply one of the greatest rebounding small forwards that the game has ever seen. He was aggressive and tenacious as he got as high as 11 rebounds per game in 1983. Okay. Qualities that I mentioned earlier, like his size, hustle, and intelligence, are also things that helped him as he battled on the boards. Over the course of his career, Larry averaged a whopping 10 rebounds per game, and when he was starting specifically at the small forward position, he averaged 9.5 rebounds per game. <laughs> That's the third highest average among primary small forwards in NBA history. Whoa. The only players ahead of him are Billy Cunningham and Elgin Baylor, who both played in the 1960s, which was easily the most inflated rebounding era of basketball history. Yeah. So not only is Bird an underrated rebounder, not only is he objectively one of the all-time great rebounders, but he's also arguably the greatest rebounder ever at his position. Along with all the other skills I talked about, Larry was also a he remarkable and done facilitator. Talking about rebounds. But I won't delve into that much because like his shooting, I also think that's down. an area that a decent amount of people oh, have a strong head, appreciation Pastor. for. <laughs> Ultimately, I think it's a solid defense and his elite rebounding that people underestimate which is why I think he's underrated, regardless of the fact that people still refer to him as Larry Legend. Larry Do you Larry. agree? Where does Larry Bird rank on your list of the greatest players of all time? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball yeah, sure content, like the video. and I'll see you guys in the next and video. And subscribe, I just did it, silly butt. And before we get up out of here, yo, what do y'all think though? Where does he rank in y'all? Uh, category of best player that ever have played in the NBA. I mean, after watching this video, he's definitely pushing number one. You know, I was always a Michael Jordan fan, but I never even really did no research on Michael Jordan myself. But uh, after all this Larry Bird uh, reactions, I'm telling y'all right now, Larry Bird definitely is going down in the book. It's probably the greatest basketball player of all time. I don't know. We will see what them LeBron documentaries are talking about. Hey, well, this your boy, DJ Nona Nero. Hey, did you like the video yet? I know you did. It's your boy. We out. Let's get it. Peace.